Welcome into a Bills free agency edition of Take Two. I'm Jonathan Acosta, joined here by our Bills insider, Vic Carucci. Vic, let's just jump right into these topics. Um, there's been a lot that's been going on this free agency with the Bills. Cutting players, restructuring contracts, signing new players, the most recent of which is wide receiver Curtis Samuel, probably the biggest free agent that the Bills have added thus far this free agency. Just what are your thoughts on that move and maybe what Brandon Bean has been able to do this week so far? I really went into this skeptical that they would make anything approaching a splash signing, but the Samuel signing qualifies as that. And you got to give credit to Brandon Bean and his capologists for working the numbers, making that room, some painful decisions along the way, but enough to allow them to, first of all, retain some key people and pick up, I think, a key ingredient. I like the Samuel signing a lot. He brings considerable speed where it is needed at the receiver position. I think he can fill the number two role vacated by Gabe Davis very well with his ability to draw coverage deep. But on top of that, and this is the thing, there's a lot of background that Brandon Bean knows about him because he was in Carolina when Samuel was drafted there, uh, knows he is a team first guy, which makes him a great fit for the Sean McDermott Bean program. He is a willing blocker. So on those run plays, which, you know, you're going to want to have that balance. And remember, Joe Brady coached him also in Carolina, knowing that when Brady dials up those run plays, he will have someone who will do the downfield blocking in Samuel. How important do you think that familiarity was specifically as it related to Samuel as someone that maybe the Bills could identify and say, hey, we know this guy is going to be a fit in our team, in our offense, in our locker room, because we know him from Carolina. Sure. It's it's huge that the Bills had the depth of background on this player that you wouldn't necessarily have on another guy from another team. Uh, and I think that played heavily into the decision to make this move. Again, a bigger spend than I thought they'd be able to make, um, but it reflects the confidence that they have in knowing the guy, knowing what he's all about, watching his formative years in Carolina, right, from 2017 through 2020. And I, I think that was huge for, uh, again, Joe Brady being there, big for uh, Brandon Bean to at least have been on the scouting side of it initially and just keeping tabs on him. So you, you do the character research and then you, then you follow up with that. And then you have a coach on your staff. You have someone running your offense who thoroughly knows this guy. And of course, he goes to Washington continues to enhance his his play, his ability. I think the fit is very good because of an offense that we know is pass-driven, but what do they need? They need defenses to respect somebody other than Stefan Diggs. They have to pull some coverage away from him. Diggs has to play better, but it, it's a lot easier, I think, for him to succeed when teams have to worry about other people. Do you think the signing of, of Samuel, excuse me, precludes the Bills from taking a receiver first or second round in the draft? Not at all. I think the Bills are still going to think uh, about drafting a receiver as high as the first round, uh, and I don't think any later than the second round. I think receiver remains a priority, enhancing that position, because, again, th that's how you're going to succeed when you have – a franchise quarterback. You've got to give Josh Allen all the assets he can have to do what he can do best. And, and that is make the big plays with his arm and stretch defenses and uh, get into those scoring uh, shootouts with the, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, the teams, the Houston Texans, all those teams that are likely to be in the path when you get to the postseason. Uh, they they know what they have to do to get over the hump. And while it might be in, in some ways uh, a step back for this team, when you think about the youth that is on their defense, that will dominate their defense, you still can look to the offense as being an integral part to their ability to, again, get over, cross that line that they haven't been able to cross in the postseason. So it won't surprise me in the least if they draft receiver given that this is considered one of the deeper receiver drafts that, that we've seen. 
With a few other free agency moves so far for the Bills, quarterback Mitch Trubisky, linebacker Nicholas Mara coming over from the Eagles, and another wide receiver in Matt Collins spent time with the Falcons most recently. Before that was with the Raiders. Just what's your overall view of, of those other uh, handful of moves for the Bills? I thought the those earlier signings that they had in free agency were more reflective of the kind of free agency period that the Bills would have. In other words, retaining your own, as best you can. And I think they did that sufficiently with keeping AJ Epinesa and Daquan Jones in the fold, two major moves. It, not great that they had to lose Leonard Floyd, but it, to get two out of three of those guys is, is really good, I think. And in terms of who else they were able to pick up, it's depth at linebacker, it's depth at receiver. Uh, these, these are guys that, and, and you need special teams contributors, right? You have to find people who are a little more capable, not that a rookie isn't going to be a good special teams player, but the reliability rate tends to be down when most of your special teams has to be devoted to those draft picks. And keep in mind, this team will, as I said, get younger, particularly on the defensive side. But overall, when you've got 11 draft picks, I don't know that they'll use all of them, but I do think they're going to lean as heavily on the draft and on the youth that's already on the roster, players that are already under those rookie contracts, because those are the contracts that fit best under the salary cap. We kind of just touched on this. As it relates to the youth that the Bills are going to have on defense next year, how important is it to bring guys back like A.J. Epinesa, Daquan Jones, who have plenty of experience in, in the system, as well as a guy like Taylor Rapp, who maybe last year was his first year in Buffalo, but now he figures to play a big role in filling the void of Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer back there at safety. As much continuity as you can find, you have to find it. You, you If it's in your ability to, as we mentioned, keep Epinesa and Jones, then go there, because that is what usually gives you the best chance to succeed. Now, they have to play well. That's one thing. And the reason you retain guys is because you think they can continue to help you out. A.J. Epinesa coming off uh, a career season, but it was also a contract year. So he's got to stay equally motivated. He's not a great guy on the edge, but he's but he's good. And he can be really good. And at times, he can, he can excel to the highest level. I think a healthy Daquan Jones from start to finish that's an all-pro tackle. That that's a guy that can be a game changer for your defensive line, and and I think help elevate uh, Ed Oliver and and other people in the middle. And we we saw Ed Oliver fade in the postseason, especially against the Chiefs in the divisional round. I think having um, Jones next to him for the whole time, as opposed to missing him for a good chunk of last season, would be key to, to getting more success up front. They're going to have to rely on Von Miller to step up his game. We know that. And we'll, we'll see if that actually happens. I have strong doubts about it. He did take the pay cut. He helped them uh, do the things that they're able to do now with some of the free agent signings they had and just getting under the cap. Uh, Taylor Rapp is going to be as important as anybody on the back end because you, you have gotten extremely young there with the de departure of uh, Jordan Poyer and the likely, we, we pretty much say it's a fait accompli, that Micah Hyde will not be back there. Who's going to be your traffic cop? Who's going to keep everybody organized and on point? And Sean McDermott's defense is designed for the back end to really lead everything. That's, that's why those were the first two Hyde and Poyer people that he signed as free agents. Uh, why Tredavious White was his first draft pick. And then you take Tredavious out of the picture and you see where the, the corner uh, position holds up, how it holds up. Christian Benford, I think, can be solid. Uh, Russell Douglas can be solid or better than solid. I thought he was as good a, an in-season acquisition as they've had in a while. So we'll see how that plays out now. But um, the whole, to me, the whole story of this season, the bigger story, will likely be what will that defense be able to do with so many uh, changes. Then one more move I think that's important to talk about that, that happened this week. Deion Dawkins 
messing with people, made it seem like maybe he was on his way out only for like maybe 10 minutes later, the Bills to announce that they've reached a, a contract extension with their starting left tackle coming off one of his best seasons as a pro. Part of that offensive line that was a real strong point for the Bills this season. So in, with all of that being said, how much of a important part did Dion play in that strength, in that play of the offensive line? And now when you lose a veteran leader like Mitch Morse from that O-line, maybe how much more does that place on Dawkins' shoulders going forward? I think the departure of Mitch Morris or the, or the Bills' decision to part ways with him actually elevated the value of Deion Dawkins, who already was considered a valuable player for them, one of the best left tackles that they've had in a long time. Now, there's some lingering moments that would be bothersome, and, and to me that would be when uh, Chris Jones basically tossed him into Josh Allen and disrupted a chance to get a critical, possibly game-winning play in the playoff game against KC. But that said, he mostly has kept his quarterback well-protected. And I think Spencer Brown had a, a strong year, probably underappreciated how much improvement he showed at the other tackle position. But you take away that anchor, that leader, that glue to the offensive line and Morris, then other people, other veterans have to be uh, the new glue, if you will. They have to be the, the, the essence of what this line was a year ago, which was one of the strongest parts of the team. A, they stayed healthy, but B, they played well. And if, if they can get that again now with Connor McGovern at center, uh, now we'll see what the guard position looks like and how well that holds up. But you look at that old line a year ago, and frankly, that was, I think, the, one of the biggest reasons they came out of that offensive tailspin of six games and ultimately found themselves in a position with the number two seed in the playoffs. When you look at where some of the former Bills have landed in, in this free agency, just what, what stands out to you? Gabe Davis going to Jacksonville, Jordan Poyer to Miami, amongst a couple of the notable ones. Yeah, uh, you know, the Poyer, the Poyer one to Miami brings back memories of Thurman Thomas uh, signing with the Miami Dolphins after his time with the Buffalo Bills. And look, Hall of Fame player, and I remember having a conversation for a story I was doing for NFL.com when that move was made. And Thurman, being Thurman, was very open about it. He intentionally, he wanted so much to be on the arch rival of the Bills to make a statement uh, of how unhappy he was that he he felt you know so uh, it felt it was so unceremonious when he was booted out the door as players of all greatness or whatever uh, it eventually ends badly Bruce Smith Andre Reid Thurman they all went out at the same time um, and again it 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 almost never ends on the highest of notes. For players, they usually don't get to choose <laughs> choose the exit strategy. But the Jordan Poyer one, and I think there's some bitterness there, to to say the least. I think in signing the two year deal that he had signed last year, he thought he would get to end his career here. I think, perhaps knowing, and I'm I'm not sure exactly this is what his mindset is, but knowing that Micah Hyde, his his partner back there for the better part of seven seasons, is gone too or won't be back. Um, gives maybe a sense that let's let's get a fresh start and he's doing it in a place where he lives it's, it's not his hometown but it's a place that he is comfortable with uh and it's a divisional team so he i think can bring um even though he's lost more than a step i believe i don't think he's not the same player at his best with buffalo but i think he comes to the dolphins as a, a potential upgrade and and help for a secondary that's also undergoing some change. And uh, the knowledge that he has of the Bills, of that offense, should be helpful in the game planning that the Dolphins do. And maybe something that will help is he's not expected to come in and be the, the guy back there. You know, they have Javon Holland, obviously one of the better safeties in this league. So uh, a good situation for Poyer. Uh, last note, just uh, as free agency continues for the Bills, anything – you uh, important for for fans to to keep an eye on just maybe things that you might be expecting coming down the line. Yeah, I you know I think from here on out it is going to be a lot of uh, I call it spackling right where you you take a good look at the roster and where you see not major holes because those those should be filled by now you should feel satisfied that the biggest problem areas of your roster are addressed. 
Uh, granted, you know, some teams go into the draft looking to do that with a quarterback. The Bills aren't in that position. And even in making a first round pick, whether it's a receiver, whether it's a cornerback, you know, at two positions of absolute need and two guys that you would expect to contribute, I still don't see the draft as having to be what is needed to save this team or fill major holes. I see them as important acquisitions, but I think they're mostly set. And then the rest of free agency is about the depth, is about you know backup roles uh, throughout the roster and, and then finding those key people to make a difference on special teams. I'll leave that. Thank you so much for your analysis of the Bills free agency so far. And I'm sure we're going to be in touch as more news trickles in throughout this offseason. For now, for Vic Carucci, Jonathan Acosta, Channel 2 Sports.